Were you robbed of trusting your gut feeling or instinct or intuition because of childhood trauma? Well, let's explore all this on today's Ask a Shrink. So depending on how we're raised, if it's in a dysfunctional family where we've had toxic parents or a victim of some sort of abuse perhaps, or just maybe a lot of emotional chaos going on, unpredictability, nothing was ever settled. If you were raised in this manner, it may have robbed you of the ability to just simply trust yourself, also known as trusting your gut instinct, your intuition. That's not fair because our gut instinct can lead us to a lot of healthy places in our life. And if we're gaslit by a parent who told us, no, what you're telling me is not the truth, and the child is thinking to themselves, well, I just told you my truth. I just shared my truth. I told you my feeling. And the parent is saying, no, 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 you don't feel this way. That can't be true. I think how you're feeling is really this. Well, if you're a little kid hearing this from your own parent, you're not going to trust yourself. Your parent is telling you that what you're feeling doesn't exist or is wrong, and you're trying to make sense of that as a little kid. That's very confusing. If you're trained this way at home, then how's a kid like this going to grow up and all of a sudden be very confident with themselves in terms of dating or how to express themselves to somebody or what career path to choose? They're not. They're not going to be able to feel comfortable doing that. And that's why we have to get in touch with our gut feeling. In fact, you'll know it's a gut feeling when it pops up when it arises from no sort of analytical thinking. Thinking is not involved at all. It's coming from somewhere else. If it happens that way, then it's an intuitive feeling. Basically, it's trusting your inner voice, your inner voice, not externally what you're hearing from others. It's going inside, down deep. And what do you feel about a certain situation? What's going on in here? That saying, we feel it in our gut, is important because that guides us in life in terms of maybe we're dating somebody and it just doesn't feel right. There's something off here. Or somebody's feeding us a bunch of BS about some topic and we're like, uh, I don't know what it is, but I just don't trust this person. We need to honor that. The kind of conditioning we had to endure or the wounding we had definitely can influence in a negative way our intuitive process. And quite often in life, an intuitive feeling is way more important than something analytical. We may run to our mind as a way to hide from feelings, so we become very intellectualized, very logical about everything, but that doesn't always serve us in life. In fact, it can pull us away from something that indeed may be in our own best interest that we're feeling on a gut level. So what I've noticed in my private practice is when I have clients who don't trust themselves in this way, it can lead to all sorts of complications. Am I right in doing this? Should I move out? Do I really want this relationship or not? Hmm, should I take this job offer? Should I go home for the holidays? We don't really know because we don't know what our gut may be trying to tell us. Most people are used to dealing with a gut feeling in terms of sensing something that's dangerous, Maybe the first impression we get from meeting somebody, but there's many, many more examples of where it's not respected. It gets sort of diminished or put down like it's not important. And this can really happen with kids who are a victim of some sort of abuse growing up. They haven't learned to trust themselves. In fact, there may not even be a self there that they're aware of. They've always been treated like a robot, a thing used on some level, taken advantage of knocked down, kicked around, whatever it is, so a child raised like that is not going to be in touch with how they're really feeling, their intuition. So a couple of quick examples where it is important to know your intuition is maybe you're the one who does the hiring for your company. You have to pick out the job candidate. Which one do you choose? They're all sort of equally qualified. They all have the same sort of college degree, let's say. Which one are you gonna choose? Usually it's related to your gut. Or another good one is sexual orientation. That's definitely a feeling, an awareness. We can't logically figure that out. Some people may try to push that away and go more to an analytical mind about attraction to others, but usually with something like, for example, sexual orientation, that's heartfelt. That's the essence of what somebody's all about. It's about who we really are as a person. We have to trust that. That's a gut feeling. Now, it doesn't mean that intuition or gut feeling is always right. Like anything in life, there's a bell curve to things. But in the grandest part, the biggest part of that bell curve, usually our intuition is right on the mark. 
So part of the process is we have to trust it. Did you think like I clearly can't be right because I was told I was stupid by my own parents? Did you think maybe I don't have a right to think about it in this way because my opinions don't really matter anyhow? Did you discount it because you were always told what to do? Always had to be a follower rather than a leader. That was the role you were put into. When you did try to express your opinion maybe to your family members at home, maybe your dad came over and smacked you and told you to shut up. Well, if anything like that happened, you're not going to trust your gut feeling because your gut feeling got you hit, it got you smacked down. So you close that down real quick. And then as we get older, we don't trust ourselves and that can lead to all sorts of complications, including complications with ourself because there's no real self-care or self-love and always doubting ourselves. We need to put ourselves at the top of the totem pole sometimes and know that what we want, our needs, what we feel comes first. We weren't given that opportunity perhaps when we were young. We never came first. We were always at the bottom of that totem pole, but now you're working with that and in working with it, you will begin trusting your gut feeling, experiment with it, give it more space if nothing else, name it for yourself, ask yourself where is this feeling coming from and as you practice with it more and more, likely it will get easier and easier to do. Trusting yourself is being comfortable in your own skin. You have to know your feelings, right, to be able to trust yourself. You have to give yourself permission to trust yourself. If you had parents, for example, that tried to rob you of that because they were manipulative, they were gaslighting you, they wanted to be in control in different ways, then that implies right there that you were robbed of your gut instinct. They didn't want you to be you. You were taken over. You had to be there for them somehow or also just respond, if nothing else, just to the chaos going on around you. If you were always on edge, if somebody's always walking on eggshells, then we're not going to trust our gut feeling. We may not even know we have a gut feeling. And if we are in touch with it, we may just dismiss it. Like, oh, no, I don't want to trust this feeling because after all, feelings weren't permitted in the household. So how are we going to trust a feeling when we don't even know a feeling? We can't describe our feelings. So please leave me some comments below. Let me know any thoughts you may have about not trusting or trusting a gut feeling in your life. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.